What's up again, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on modeling real-world situations using trigonometry. Now, we have a real-world situation here that we are going to model using right triangles and then use trigonometry to eventually solve for an unknown value. Let's go ahead and start by highlighting the key information. We have a 200-foot-long zip line cable attached on the top of the tree that goes all the way down to the ground at an angle of 61 degrees. And we want to know how far away the foot of the cable is to the base of the tree. So let's go ahead and visualize this scenario. We have the ground, we have a tree, and we have a zip line cable attached to the top going all the way down to the ground. Now the zip line cable is 200 feet long, the angle with the ground is 61 degrees, and the distance between the base of the cable and the foot of the tree is our unknown, so we are going to call it x. Now since 61 is our reference angle, we know that the bottom of the triangle x is our adjacent side, and the 200 feet is our hypotenuse h. Using SOHCAHTOA, we know that a and h means that we are going to use cosine to solve for x in this problem. Now the cosine of 61 is going to equal a, or x in this case, over h, which is 200. And since x is on top of the fraction, we are going to multiply 200 times the cosine of 61, which equals 96.96192, continuing on and on, which we will round to 97 feet, the distance between the foot of the tree and the base of the zipline cable. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example that would involve trig modeling to find an unknown value. Here we have a skateboard ramp making a 32 degree angle with the ground, that has a vertical height of 12 feet, and we want to find the length of the ramp. So let's go ahead and label our diagram. The angle between the ramp and the ground is 32 degrees, and the ramp has a vertical height of 12 feet, and our unknown x is going to be the length of the ramp, or the hypotenuse of the triangle. So we'll go ahead and label O and H. This means we're going to use the sine function. So we have the sine of 32 degrees equals O over H, in this case 12 over X. And since X is on the bottom of the fraction, we're going to be using division here. So we have 12 divided by the sine of 32 equals an irrational number, which we can round to 22.6 feet, the approximate length of the skateboard ramp. Okay, so now let's move on to a slightly more advanced example. In this scenario, we have Sean operating a remote-controlled drone hovering above a garbage pail that is 50 yards away from him. And we should also note that the angle of elevation between the drone and the ground is 43 degrees, and we want to find the altitude of the drone. So let's start with Sean's location on the ground and the garbage pail that is 50 yards away from him in which he is flying the drone directly above. We know that the garbage pail is 50 yards away from Sean's location on the ground, and we know that the angle of elevation is 43 degrees. What we want to find is the altitude of the drone, which is how high above the ground the drone is flying. We'll call this vertical height x, and now we see that in reference to the 43 degree angle we have the opposite and adjacent sides, so we'll be using tangent. So the tan of 43 equals O over A, in this case x over 50. And since x is on top of the fraction, we'll be multiplying here 50 times the tangent of 43 degrees equals 46.62575, continuing on and on, which we will round to 46.6 yards, the approximate altitude of the remote control drone. Our next scenario is a little bit dangerous, so make sure you're ready for this one. Okay, so we have an anti-aircraft tank that is targeting an enemy helicopter flying at an altitude of 1,600 feet in the air. The ground distance between the tank and the helicopter is 950 feet, and what we need to find is the angle of elevation that the tank has to raise its cannon to in order to hit the enemy target. So here's the fun part, let's model this scenario. We have the ground, we have a tank, and we have an enemy helicopter that's flying in the air at an altitude of 1,600 feet. And the ground distance between the tank and the helicopter is 950 feet. Now notice that the cannon on the tank is not directed at the enemy helicopter. 
it would have to elevate itself a certain number of degrees in order to hit its target, and that number of degrees is what we're going to find. Fire in the hole! Now the angle of elevation that the cannon of the tank was raised to is our unknown, so we're going to call that x degrees. And we know that when our unknown is an angle, we don't use regular trig, we use inverse trig. In this case, we're going to use inverse tan. So the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, 1600 over 950, can be solved and allow us to approximate the angle of elevation at 59.3 degrees. And our final trig modeling scenario is our most advanced scenario. So here we have a boat approaching a lighthouse that is 63 meters tall. Now there's a captain on the boat measuring the angle of elevation between the boat to the top of the lighthouse at first to be 19 degrees. 10 minutes later as the boat moves closer to the lighthouse, the new angle of elevation is 54 degrees and what we want to find is exactly how far the boat traveled in those 10 minutes. So let's model this scenario. We have our lighthouse and we have our boat approaching the lighthouse in the distance. The height of the lighthouse is 63 meters and the first measure of the angle of elevation is 19 degrees. Then the boat continues to travel towards the lighthouse for 10 minutes and takes a second measurement. This time the new angle is 54 degrees. And remember what we want to find is this distance that the boat traveled over that 10 minute period. That is our unknown. Now notice here we have two right triangles that are overlapping. We have a large right triangle with a height of 63 and an angle of 19 degrees. And then we have a smaller right triangle that also has a height of 63, but the angle for this smaller right triangle is 54 degrees. Now we can find the length of the base of the larger right triangle using tangent, which we get to be 182.97 approximately. And we use the same process to find the length of the base of the smaller right triangle, again using the tan function. And we figure out that that length is approximately 45.77 meters. Now we still haven't answered the question yet, but we are very close. If we take the length of the base of the large right triangle, 182.97, and subtract from it the length of the base of the smaller right triangle, 45.77, the difference is the distance that the boat traveled in that 10 minute period, approximately 137.2 meters. Please follow us on Instagram at MashupMath for free daily math tips and infographics.